Hi students, and welcome to today's lesson. I'm Ms. Albina. Today, we will explore the question, how do long-term changes in an environment affect the organisms that live there? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal, and let's get started. Hey, this forest environment looks familiar. Remember, we talked about the animals that live here throughout the year. Do you think this environment will always look exactly like this? What are some ways this environment could change? Maybe a fire could burn down all the grass and trees, or the river could overflow during a flood. A drought could kill all the grass, or other severe weather events such as tornadoes could destroy the area. Not only that, but people could decide to build houses or other buildings on that land. This amusement park would certainly change the environment. Let's think of some more possible changes. The leaves on the trees could change color in the fall. Cold weather could freeze the river or it could even snow. Wow, there are so many different ways this forest environment could change. To better understand them, let's sort the different kinds of changes into categories. How would you sort the changes? Hmm, what do these four have in common? These are all changes caused by severe weather. And what about these three changes? All these changes are caused by human activity. What about these last two changes? These are just a natural part of the seasons changing. So now we have some ideas about how an environment can change. Some of the changes are short term, but others, such as building a house, would change the environment for a long time. That makes me wonder, how do long-term changes in an environment affect the organisms that live there? Here, I have an illustration of a forest environment like the one we just observed. How would you describe this environment? I see a river running through the forest. I also see grass and some rocks. I see trees and bushes too. All the animals in these photographs live in this forest environment. Where is each animal best suited to live within this environment? I'll give you a little bit of time to think. I placed each animal in the part of the forest environment most suitable for it. In other words, its habitat. Remember, a habitat is a part of an environment that has everything a particular kind of organism needs to grow and survive. Let's try to understand each organism's habitat a little better. We'll start with this red bird called a cardinal. What components of the larger forest environment are part of the bird's habitat. The bird's habitat stretches from the top of the trees all the way down to the ground where the bird might eat insects or worms. Next, we'll think about the deer. What parts of this environment make up the deer's habitat? What does the deer need to survive? Well, the deer lives on land. It eats grass and other low plants. So the deer's habitat would be here on the ground where these low plants grow. The snake's habitat includes the rocks where it hides and the ground where it finds food. And what about the butterfly? The butterfly's habitat includes the plants where it gets food and the air where it flies. Now we've reached the last animal. What is the fish's habitat? The fish's habitat includes the river where it can swim and find food. Now let's see how these different habitats overlap with the larger environment. Wow, this environment is made up of so many different habitats. The forest environment includes so much more than we could see in the original illustration. Now's a good time to revisit our earlier question. How do long-term changes in an environment affect the organisms that live there? 
We know some changes have natural causes, such as changes caused by seasons or by severe weather. Other changes, however, are caused by people. I wonder, what do changes caused by people look like over time? Imagine a company wants to build a parking lot in the forest environment. How do you think building a parking lot will affect that environment? Do you think some of the animals' habitats will be destroyed? Habitat destruction could force some animals to move in order to survive. Let's make a model to think more about this change. How could I model adding a parking lot to the forest environment? I'll put this black rectangle here to represent the parking lot, or even better, I can use this photograph of a parking lot. What do you think will happen to the bird if people chop down the trees where it lives in order to build the parking lot? Well, the bird will have to leave to find another habitat in order to survive. And what about the fish? How would the fish's habitat change with the addition of a parking lot? Well, if we bring a parking lot to the forest environment, we bring cars and people too, so trash might end up in the river. What would happen to the fish? The fish might survive, but it might also die. And what about the snake? Hey, where is the snake? Oh, there it is. What would happen to the snake if the company built that parking lot? Well, the parking lot would cover the ground where the snake usually lives, and the builders might have to move the rocks where the snake hides. The snake would probably have to leave to find another habitat. So far, we've looked at quite a few animals, but what about plants? What would happen to the grass if people built a parking lot? Well, the parking lot would cover up and kill some of the grass, but some grass might still survive and grow around the edges of the parking lot. Let's put all these ideas in one place. I wrote down all of our thoughts in this handy chart. The chart lists each organism, how that organism's habitat might change if the parking lot were built, and the effect that change might have on the organism. Your task after this lesson will be to finish filling out this chart in your science journal. Hey, did you notice that different organisms respond in different ways to a long-term change in their environment? Some organisms can stay, but others have to move away. Some organisms may even die, but guess what? There is another option. Some organisms have a different way to respond to long-term changes in their environment. Do you have any idea what that response might be? Well, you'll have to wait. We'll investigate that next time. Let's review your task. Complete the chart about 